It's gonna be Scott against Brandon. It's gonna be Iron Valiant Ente against Roaring Moon Moltres. If you thought the last match was explosive, this one's gonna be fast pace. Both these decks are gonna be attacking potentially turn one. Both these decks are gonna be doing big damage. Both these decks are gonna be drawing cards, but only one is gonna come out the winner. And uh, we're gonna have to see, is it gonna be Roaring Moon? Or is going to be Ente? Well, I have some fun facts here, Wancho, for you. Brandon, uh, piloting the Roaring Moon deck, has said that they have day twoed the last three regionals that they played in with Roaring Moon. So we are about to see a highly skilled player here. And then Scott, as well, has been playing this game since 1998, Wancho. How old were you in 1998, Wancho? I, I, let's, let's not talk about that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was born. That's all we have to born. care about. 1998, definitely a long time to be playing the Pokemon trading card game. I wish I was playing that long, but who? that means both these players are experts. We have a three-time day two with the same deck and someone who is definitely a senior in this game. <laughs> yeah, definitely at <laughs> all. Oh, a senior indeed. How about let's just say an OG. Right? An OG, yes, okay, yes. okay. <laughs> Something a little, bit, a little bit better than that. But yeah, it's going to be awesome. Let's talk about this matchup, Wancho. How do you see things shaping up on paper between these players? I think it's the player that takes the first two prizes obviously is going to be ahead. Most of these decks basically are just going to be hitting back and forth. Uh, they're both basic the uh, basic EX Pokemon that can attack potentially on the first turn of the game. It's just a matter of how they do that attack. Entei can attack uh, with the Burning Rondo. It does 220 if both players have a full bench, which most likely both players will have a full bench. And versus the Roaring Moon that can attack 220 as well. The awkward thing is both these decks have 230 HP. Yeah. It's a matter of how do we maneuver that scenario. Yes, Ante can sometimes hit themselves with the uh, with the stadium, making things easier for the Roaring Moon. Or some sometimes Roaring Moon has to really use the Frenzy Gouging instead. If you do that, yeah. I mean, that leaves the Ante player open to uh, Valiant Knockout or maybe even take an extra turn using something like the Medicham V. Yeah. It seems simple in paper that this is just going to be V against EX, two prize, two prize. But there are tools. There yeah. are tools indeed. Yeah, we're seeing this uh, Iron Valiant. We call it Valiente because it's bringing the heat <laughs> here today. And then Brandon going to try to slow things down, or should I say speed things up with some Roaring Moon action in this matchup. So we're going to see how things shape up here. But two very uh, different but also similar decks as well so it's going to be interesting to see the pace of play between these players and how explosive this game truly is we're going to lay out prize cards here between both of our players i believe there was also an additional mulligan oh uh, whoa that is a lot of professor's research there uh in the prize cards watch out. wait <laughs> <laughs> wait 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 is uh the, you know juniper is just really really into the research right now <laughs> As uh, Hit the books. <laughs> uh, for the Brandon, card. though, the Forest Seal Stone is prized. Luckily, they do play two copies. Oh, wait, no, sorry. The They play one copy of the Forest Seal Stone, so that could be detrimental. Uh, that's the only bad thing, I think, for Brandon's prize. Otherwise, it was pretty standard. Prize uh, cards. Yeah, let's see if the the lack of research slows down Scott. Uh, they, yeah. they are playing... Ooh. Oh, they, they, they do play three Serena. That's three. the interesting thing. Well, we have the flip. We're going to get into this game here. I believe there may have been one or two mulligans, so Scott potentially could have drawn into a few extra cards for the turn. But Brandon is going to be starting us off here in our Swiss round six here in Vancouver. Get hyped because we're starting off with an Ultra Ball here. Going to discard a couple of resources. Get into the deck here for a Pokemon. But continue what you were saying, Wancho, with yeah. the Serena. No, uh, we, Scott prize three professors research that's technically their main draw support they only play four yeah. their other means of draw is going to be serena that's not a card you see every day it, it it serena is able to essentially act as a pseudo gust or you can discard cards from your hand drop to five that's it's not that good but it's something <laughs> oh, scott can utilize but right now brandon is going to go first i think that puts scott in a favorable position also has the squawk to be able to draw as well yeah and with Mew in the active, 
Oh my gosh, they're both playing <laughs> shiny squawk. Get out of here. Shiny birds flying down for both of our players. Brandon bringing out the squawk ability EX here onto the field as well. Of course, that brand new addition uh, with that shiny. I love to see it. That was the Ultra Ball pick here. Roaring Moon going to join the field as well. And, of course, starting with that Mew EX in the active position and a Pokestop in the field. Or, I guess, Pokestop is the field at the moment <laughs> with that Stadium card. Yes, restart ability is being used. Great way to just draw no. three cards. Why, why not? It's free. Wow. And especially if you draw to the Battle VIP pass. Jeez. Now we're setting up. Something I do want to see from Brandon, though. He has to grab some single prize Pokemon, like that Radiant Greninja. Looks like it's going to opt for the Moltres V instead, but I'd like to see maybe a more Peko, because you want to retreat into a single prize Pokemon. Maybe more Peko doesn't have enough HP, so retreat to Greninja yeah. could be the play. Yeah, but that Battle VIP pass bringing out two Pokemon onto the field here in that Galarian Moltres V, as well as that Radiant Greninja for Brandon. So yeah, that Mew EX restart ability, incredible. Just a quick three cards into an awesome hand, and we are just drawing. This is what you see from our Roaring Moon players. They start going into their deck very quickly and lining things up as fast as possible, and that Squawk ability is a fantastic way to do it, of course, on your first turn with that Squawk in seed. So Brandon's already gone through a big chunk of cards here. Earthen Vessel now being played to discard a card and draw out two basic energy as well. And if Brandon's chugging. It seems counterproductive sometimes when you think about it. Oh, I'll use Earthen Vessel to discard an energy to get more energy. Yeah. But no, that's exactly what you want. You want to thin out the deck, make sure what's in the deck right now are just resources that can get me more cards, like the Trekking Shoes. And uh, again, you get, you get the energy out of there. And energy in the discard pile, that's a way to accelerate more energy into play by using Dark Patch or, say, that second Roaring Moon in play now as well. Uh, again, all we needed to do is a retreat big card here we failed to talk about is the Ancient Booster Energy Capsule. A mouthful because it adds 60 more HP. I mentioned we we're going to be going Bulky. back and forth. This is one way to really wall out the uh, your opponent having yeah. a little bit more HP. Yep, that Dark Patch as well coming into play. As you said, Wancho adding that Dark Energy onto the field here. And of course, we also have the Galarian Moltres V with that Dire Flame Wings ability able to accelerate that energy out of the discard pile onto the bench as well. So that oh. is huge. We're seeing the Pokestop going to have one discard of that energy here, but two item cards into the hand for Brandon, and it's just the retreat now into that Radiant Greninja. Great play here by Brandon. And I just have to say, discarded off that Pokestop was a Pokemon catcher. Very high risk, high reward card, but something if heads could potentially change the uh, pace of the game. True. That is very true. Well, that was a pretty solid start there for Brandon. That was the first turn that we saw from Brandon. Now going into the Radiant Greninja that's kind of tanking in the active position here. We're over onto Scott's side of the field. So speaking of Valiante here, Wancho, this is not a deck we see too often. I would say I don't even think it was on our graph at all. <laughs> Huge placements at our um, LAIC events, and that, I think that's where it was hugely popularized here. So what is kind of the uniqueness in the way this deck works here for Scott? You're, you, uh, the, Val, Val, the Valiente deck works by really pa attacking with the Entei, which does good damage. Again, it does 20 plus 20 for each bench. So it goes up to around 220. And uh, and yeah, sorry, 20 plus 20. And then it has the power of Iron Valiant to be able to adjust numbers. It gets to ping 20 damage across the board, maybe set up a couple of knockouts. And with Magma Basin, this is the, there is the potential here to attack turn one. Something Scott is going to need this turn, though is going to be the escape rope. They do play a lot of switch cards because that is the nature of the deck. You want to go in and out of the active to ping, to get that uh, tachyon, tachyon bit bits. ping. Mm -hmm. And uh, they should be, they should have it in hand. But right now, what's lacking is energy. Yeah, we see this professor's research. That is the only one in deck, I believe. The rest are in the prize cards here for Scott, but was able to find one here to draw into more cards. We got that uh, the Tachyon bits off as well. Every time that Iron Valiant goes into the active position, they're able to place those two damage counters on one of your opponent's uh, Pokemon, and that's pretty huge here for this deck. 
course, like you said, that burning rondo that we have on the Ente V as well. It's just going to be kind of a lot of moving, shifting around. We're seeing that now with the escape rope. The Roaring Moon EX with no damage on it coming into the active position as well, of course, as this Ente V that is fully charged up, ready to go. Even has a uh, four seal stone on it as well. It's actually still lacking one more energy here, and oh, off no. the squawk. There was no energy. You do believe? Oh, there we go. There okay. it is. Oh, <laughs> the fleet footed. The fleet footed. <laughs> Woo! That got risky there, but oh my goodness, the fleet footed drawing into that energy needed for that NTV. That was actually way closer. I thought it had the energy, Ancho. <laughs> that was scary. It's okay. We had the four seal stone to potentially get the energy That's anyway. True, yeah. So we weren't in a safe spot, but doing 220 damage here onto the Roaring Moon. Not the knockout, thanks to the tool and the yep. fact that it has 230 HP, but we're setting up plays here. And Scott is in a great spot. I wanted to, I want to see how Brandon can respond. Uh, something of note, again, luckily, I don't think we're going to lack stadiums in play. These are going to be very important for both players because Roaring Moon, they actually require... It requires them to discard a stadium to do 220 damage. So it is lined up here. Brandon just needs one more energy and a switch. One more energy and a switch, and we got plenty of cards, at least I think, that we're working with here from Brandon's side of things. Yes, and uh, another th card I do want to talk about, Boo, is going to yeah. be this Radiant Charizard. Just the Radiant Charizard there, just because it is a single prize attacker Scott can potentially mm. use later down in the game. It does this 250 damage, knocking out any two prize Pokemon in play. So that, that's going to definitely be a big card here. Yeah, that is a card that gets better over the uh, longevity of the game because it's attack becomes less energy that you need thanks to its ability. And yeah, that is a huge attacker towards the end of the game that could come out, take some knockouts, and t or, uh, wrap things up here for Scott. But we're still over on Brandon's turn now. I can't even see what's going into the discard <laughs> pile. <laughs> so the, they used a Pokemon catcher. Unfortunately, it was Tails there. Oh, OK. I think that was OK, since you do want to knock out the active. All right. Ultra Ball discarding the pal pad there. They're, all they're doing here is restart. That's all they have at the moment. Three cards off this restart, of course, with an empty hand. We're going to see a trekking shoes. It's going to get us a little bit further drawing into this card. And then you decide whether or not you want to discard it and draw the next card, or you can keep it to the hand. And Brandon's going to choose to keep it in the hand here. I want to see what was that choice. I know. I was wondering that, too. It looked like a stadium, but I don't, I don't know. I see. Oh, it was a research, potentially, Ooh, or okay. the energy switch. Oh, it may have been the energy switch, and that's actually we're going to see now the energy switch being played here to switch that dark onto the active Roaring Moon energy attachment from hand with that water energy coming down as well to charge up this Roaring Moon, and we're seeing that research being played now. Brandon is going to chew, or draw into another seven cards here. They need another energy switch here to be able to attack with the active Roaring Moon or a switch card. Do they have it here? If they miss the attack, could spell doom here. For Brandon, for Brandon's uh, Brandon's match, as we do see the dark patch, do they have the energy switch? Do they have the switch oh, card? Oh, switch okay. cart. Okay, that's like, even better. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That switch cart, um, being able to switch this Pokemon, this Roaring Moon, from the active to the bench, but also heals as well. Thirty damage going to come off of that Roaring Moon EX to this Roaring Moon EX being in the active now, fully charged up, ready to go. Has an emergency jelly as well. <laughs> That's for sure. The healing there from this switch card definitely matters since, uh, again, Scott is potentially looking to take a knockout on that Roaring Moon by using the Tachyon Bits pings. It just made it a little bit tougher as it's just going to be a Calamity knockout there. Calamity Storm here <laughs> thanks to that stadium. The Pokestop is gone now thanks to that Calamity Storm. 220 damage there for Brandon. Taken out that Entei V. And now Scott is going to promote this Iron Valiant into the active position with that future booster energy capsule. We're seeing capsules everywhere here, Wancho. Uh, a big card here uh, for Scott is something we don't see in most of the uh, Entei Valiant decks. R is going to is going to be that Bibarel. Typically, uh, the Valiant decks only play basic Pokemon, but just for this just for this case, this Bib can take a spot because right now that's the only draw oh, yeah. Scott has. 
It's actually kind of important at the moment, <laughs> yeah. Well, we still have the four seal stone, I suppose, as well, that Scott has the ability to use. We're going to see an escape rope now coming down. Lots of switching, as we mentioned before, for this deck so that you can make sure to get those damage counters out onto the field with the tachyon bits. That's why we see these coins being placed onto the Iron Valiant EX as well to spread out those damage counters to know that you actually use the ability. Uh, as well, and the Industrious Incisor is going to get a coin too because Beaverell coming into play here. Going to draw into another future booster capsule and put it straight onto this benched uh, um, Iron Valiant. We were just talking about whether you were Team Future or Team Ancient. Yeah. And uh, I guess this is the Master Showcase that, again, future booster energy capsule giving the Iron Valiant free retreat. Very important. Um, but right now, the Roaring Moon on the opposing side, the damaged Roaring Moon anyway, as of round. 60 HP remaining, if I'm not wrong. Sorry, around, around 80, 80 damage, I think. Quick math. I was doing the math show. there. <laughs> and it's gonna be, it's gonna take a couple of pings here. So it's gonna be tough. Couple of pings indeed. You are so right though, Wancho. It's future versus ancient right now. <laughs> Tell us in the chat which one you are rooting for. Are you a, a team future or team ancient? <laughs> but yeah, right now, it's not looking good for future because we don't even have an attack just yet. We need the stadium. We need the Magma Basin. And we talked about earlier, the research is prized. We're going to have these three of them. <laughs> All three researches are prized. And so there was already one played as well. It's going to be the Serena here. Whoa! Uh, For Scott, that is a ton of battle VIP passes. My goodness. Uh, I'm sure Scott's not going to be missing those in the after rotation. <laughs> um, yeah, true. <laughs> oh, my does, gosh could potentially attack with the Radiant Charizard. It's going to take Magma Basin and then some. I'm not sure what we can do here. It might just have to be a pass, to be honest. Yeah, Taking is... a knockout on the Radiant Greninja doesn't seem good in any case. No. It's, just, it's a one prize Pokemon. Yeah, it almost just makes it more awkward somehow mm -hmm. um, than it already is. So, yeah, it's just going to be the Ultra Ball thinning the deck a little bit, getting that Entei V out. We at least are going to see um, the switch into that second Iron Valiant as well to get the Tachyon bits damage out onto the field. But Brandon still has that Radiant Greninja in the active position. It was just a pass here from Scott. And we're going to start off with the Concealed cards here, drawing into two additional cards after discarding that Dark Energy. It's going to be a Battle of the P pass and I believe a supporter. Yeah, something right now Brandon is going to need. He needs to find those Pokestops. Right now, there is no stadium in play. If Brandon is going to be forced to use something like the Frenzied Gouging, for example, that's going to be putting him in a bad spot. Looking at his hand, I think he does have the Pokestop, so that's great. Can just use Calamity Storm. I believe Knockout on the active should be, should be clear as... Yeah, Brandon is going to promote which Roaring Moon here. It's going to be the damaged <laughs> which, one. Yeah, which Roaring Moon? <laughs> yeah, damaged Roaring Moon EX coming out here, as well as a Pokestop for Brandon. Of course, as we said, you have to have that um, Stadium card out in order to get that extra boost in damage with that Calamity Storm for Brandon. We're seeing a Forest Seal Stone come down onto that Galarian Moltres V. Another utility that the Moltres has in this deck allows you to use that Forest Seal Stone and get that V Star power off as well, which is huge here for Brandon. Just debating uh, any cards left to play in the hand. Nope, it's just going to be this Calamity Storm here with that extra damage discarding that Pokey Stop. Actually, I made, I made a mistake. And oh. I have Rewinding? Yeah, I, don't have, I only have two energy. Yeah, you don't have energy. Oh, not enough Ooh. energy on. Wait, what? How did we miss that, Wancho? Not, there's not three energy there onto that Roaring Moon EX. And you do need three energy for actually both moves. Frenzy, frenzy Gouging and Calamity Storm. Did we retreat? I don't know. I don't know how Like we... Oh, ju wait, just didn't place it from hand, I think. Okay, okay, looks like... Uh, is Brandon just... There's a... Because this was also the Roaring Moon. Oh, no, we hit into this Roaring Moon. We attacked... Uh. Okay. Okay, I think, that was a, I think that was a fist pump there because we're seeing some pretty solid sportsmanship mm -hmm. here, Wancho, from Scott Patches. Scott was saying, it's fine, attach the energy from your hand. No need to call a judge or anything on this uh, situation. We're, we're good to go here because Brandon did have the ability to attach mm -hmm. that energy. So I think it was just an oversight there. But yeah, Scott is going to allow Brandon to take that knockout here. 
fantastic sportsmanship and we're over onto Scott's side of the field now. Already used the fleet footed ability on that NTV that came in so clutch before here. Yes, good guy Scott. And <laughs> but right now position is looking pre pretty dire. Pretty and grim. The future is grim, one show. <laughs> oh no, oh no. <laughs> But right now with the escape rope, I'm trying to see what lines of plays Scott still has access to. He has tools. He can potentially maybe take an extra turn with the Medicham. He has an attacker oh, with no, the... No, Medicham's in the prize cards. Wait, is there multiple? No, right? Oh, no, there's yeah. just one. He has an attacker with, like, the Radzard, potentially. Yeah, that's maybe true. Maybe buy Radiant one Charizard. more turn. Yeah, Radiant Charizard, definitely uh, the, the move here is quite cheap thanks to that ability there. Could buy some time, but... Not a single prize card has been taken, unfortunately, on Scott's side of the field. And it's just knock after knock here for Brandon. Going to wrap things up and take this first game between our players, Wancho. <laughs> Brandon leading to uh, maybe some potential good results, maybe another day two with Roaring Moon. Ooh. I don't want to speak too soon, but <laughs> Brandon doing fantastic here in this match. So far, going to take our first game but uh, that was still a pretty solid showcase of both of our decks. What do you think Scott can do differently going into this game to Wancho? Not prize three professors research <laughs> yeah, is gonna true. be step one there, but I think Scott played it perfectly. He played it the way he needed to. The only problem was Roy Moon had more HP yep. thanks to that ancient booster capsule. As we do see the replay here, just the Entei being able to take the first attack. The first attack that unfortunately did not lead to taking the first two prizes. Yes. First two prizes came from Brandon here. It Bye. was just short. And we did see it being healed. Some of those da mm -hmm. uh, the damage counters being healed with the switch cart as well. So Brandon just had some possibility there. Of course, that was the turn. Brandon didn't attach the energy, but Scott actually allowed Brandon to go back, take the move back, attach the energy, and then attack. And that was fantastic to see from Scott. Um, yeah, wasn't able to close things out. Unfortunately, Brandon had everything to uh, take these last two prize cards and take this game. Yes, and here it is, the last turn of the game. It just needs to take two prizes. If they, have, if they had the boss, and they did have it, uh, even choosing to attack with the Galarian Moltres instead of any of the Roaring Moons, no. taking this first game. Again, very well played. Good guy, Scott, oh, yeah. though. Love to see yeah. it here in the Pokemon trading card game. We are, we are a community at the end of the day, and a very, very good community. Um, with that, again, we did see he did get to attack first, which was great. Uh, would, would love to see maybe added pressure. I think that's what was missing. Scott did miss a turn of attack, yeah. right? And uh, that definitely mattered. Would love to see the tools like the Medicham potentially take extra turns. Maybe. Yeah, that was unfortunate it was in the prize. Honestly, the prize cards were just terrible <laughs> for Scott last game. Like, can we get some some more balanced prize cards? Let's try to ask for that, Wancho. But yeah, still a fantastic game between our players. You'll love to see some good sportsmanship as well. Scott Patchett being a, being a good sport since 1998. Let's go. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at these prize cards, Wancho. Uh, looking at the prizes, just a couple of switch cards here for Scott, for Brandon. One Roaring Moon, a Dark Patch Energy. So nothing too important. Yeah, Cards they have multiple balanced. of. Much Definitely. more balanced. We're going to see another game here. <laughs> and Scott just starting to squawk. Starting to squawk indeed. But Brandon is kicking off our turn here with a Battle VIP pass. Coming out onto the field. Going to get some more Pokemon established on this bench here for Brandon. We saw the Battle VIP pass in our last game between these players. And... Proved to be fantastic for Brandon. Really allowed for that extra step of setup in the beginning and uh, gonna look to do that again. Yes, again, Brandon looking, eyeing out uh, the Radiant Greninja once again. I think that was a very important card in yeah. this matchup. Again, you wanna put up the single prize Pokemon and the Morpeko, which is typically the more ideal single prize Pokemon. It has free retreat, it can even attack potentially. Mm. Only has 70 HP. Let's not put that down against the deck that... <laughs> oh, never mind, never mind. Yeah, that's a bit That's a bit too low there. We're going to see that Squawk Ability EX come out as well as that Radiant Greninja. The Radiant Greninja also allows you to get those energy into the discard pile. And we saw those flying out of the discard pile in our last game with those Dark Patches, the Galarian Moltres as well. And that really accelerated Brandon's board state, getting all of those energy out. We're going to see this first Concealed Cards discarding an energy here to draw into two additional cards. We also 
also saw Trekking Shoes was like the first card play. Mm -hmm. And uh, we saw a discard of a Galarian Moltres V off of that uh, into a different card. Not sure which one it was, but now we're going to see a switch card into that Radiant Greninja, just like the last game, mm -hmm, Macho. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Big switch card there. I mean, in the last game, Brandon did have a better start since they opened Mew, had free retreat. But yep. having to use the switch card there, yes, you're not getting the value of healing a Pokemon, yeah. but getting the switch just as important. And we haven't even squawked yet. There's already oh two energies in play. Gosh. We haven't Dire Flame Wings. This yeah. is looking... And, and there could have been another one if somehow one went into the discard pile, too, because there was another <laughs> Dark Patch. But um, this is Rory Moon here, Wancho. This is our ancient representation. <laughs> Who in the stream chat is uh, is rooting for the Roaring Moon? Because it's working out for you right now. That That is brutal to see. <laughs> the future's not given up yet. There's still... Uh, this match to potentially win as we are going to see another battle VIP pass though and I wonder now though if Brandon's going to play the a little bit safer maybe he's going to opt to not bench another Pokemon maybe limit the damage output of the Entei guess the, another downside of the Entei deck is you are dependent on your opponent also benching a ton of Pokemon for damage output so by not benching one more Pokemon you're only doing 200 but there is already a squawk in play, so... Yeah, I was about to say, there's a squawk in play as well as... I don't know if Brandon is honestly too worried about it. I think Brandon just choosing mm -hmm. the aggressive path because it worked so well in game one. And honestly, we saw some incredible plays with that Mew EX as well. Mm -hmm. That restart ability got Brandon into some incredible cards. So, yeah, going to choose to bring out the Mew EX. There was a uh, chance to do maybe something else, maybe limit your board so that Burning Rondo doesn't do as much damage. But Brandon is choosing to go aggressive here. And, of course, that Mew EX has free retreat, which is always nice. Um, as a pivot option if you do get escape roped, which is so popular uh, from this Valiente deck. I mean, they're everywhere. So <laughs> <laughs> Scott starting off this first turn, uh, the second turn of the game here, but the first for Scott. So we're going to start off with an Ultra Ball here, discarding a Lost Vacuum as well as a Switch card. So that's another switch, switching card down, of course. As we said, there's two in the prize cards, a Switch and I think an Escape Rope. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the prize cards. So we'll yeah. make sure to keep track of those switching resources. There's a ton of them in the deck, but Scott is also keeping track of resources, of course, on this initial search through the deck off his Ultra Ball, then going to bring out an Iron Valiant EX to the bench. Yeah, it's not the most ideal discard there for the Ultra Ball. You're discarding a couple of resources. You'd love to see an energy card hit the discard pile, but right mm -hmm. now we have another switch. We are going to get out of the active and getting the very important Tachyon bit ping there onto the Roaring Moon. The next question is, can we get the energy? Radzart is in the hand here. Um, you need the Stadium plus an energy, so a couple of cards we need. We have Forest Seal Stone to work with. At least there is the research in hand to potentially get a free, oh, a fresh start. And looks like Scott is eyeing out playing this Jet Energy to promote Mm. Another, an Entei to draw some cards. Yeah, Jet Energy promoting that Entei V into the active position here. It's a pivot as soon as you play it onto a Pokemon. We're going to see this fleet footed. That was almost an oversight there from Scott. Mm -hmm. Was going to switch, but then said, oh, wait, I, I have to fleet foot it first to get an extra draw here. But that, that was a very important fleet footed because it drew, drew him the fire energy to be able to research it. Now we're just a magma basin away from potentially taking an attack. I don't see one, though. Ooh, well, there's a Forest Seal Stone to work with. True, that's true. <laughs> yes, we always forget about the Forest Seal Stone. Of course, thanks to that future booster energy capsule there. The future is bright here <laughs> for Iron Valiant, giving it free retreat here and a bonus 20 damage from attacks from the Iron Valiant. But that's also going to get this NTV into the active position here after that pivot into another fleet footed ability to draw an additional card. And yeah, as you said, still has the Forest Seal Stone to be utilized if that's what Scott chooses to do for this turn. But Boo, more importantly, right now, there is no escape room. That means if they use the Forest Seal Stone to get the Magma Basin. Oh no. They're only attacking into the Radiant Greninja. Yeah, what is his hand actually? Like, what am I looking at? There's here? a lot of switch. There's a, I believe there was an actual switch and the escape cart. 
Okay, we have the Forest Seal Stone here being utilized by Scott. The Magma Basin was actually the first card on top, I think. <laughs> so just grabbing that Magma Basin straight off the top here, putting it into play immediately. Thanks to that Forest Seal Stone. Yes, uh, there's a couple of Bidoof, but opting not to bench one, really prioritizing getting some Entei in play and the Valiance. Uh, there it is, Magma Basin getting the damage onto that Entei. Yep. They, they have the attack. I'm not sure if it's correct to take this not, knockout necessarily, but you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, that is the truth, Wancho. You got to do what you got to do. That Iron Valiant, of course, getting the Tachyon bits off again w thanks to uh, that retreat out. And then we see a switch card into that Entei V here. And we're seeing the attack now. As for Brandon Turn, it's as simple as energy attach They'll probably have the knockout there because yep. there is a stadium in play, but we are going to bump it. Yep, uh, bumping it for that town store. But yeah, Scott is going to take the first prize card, knocking out that Radiant Greninja, bringing the heat from the future <laughs> side of this field. But we're bringing it back to the past here, Wancho, with the Roaring Moon Ancient deck being piloted by Brandon here, bumping the town store into play. Um, that Magma Basin go into the discard pile and is playing it as well to search out a tool card from the deck here for Brandon. It's just such a powerful card in this deck, being able to search for anything, uh, for any tool, which leads you to Forest Seal Stone. So it just turns into pretty much anything you want from the deck or something like oh. the Ancient Booster Energy Capsule, which we saw was so important in the last uh, last match, just because giving plus 60 HP puts you out of harm's way, potentially. I'm curious, though, where is it going to go? Is it going to go to the Roaring Moon with the damage? Already has 40 on it, though. Uh, should be still should still be able to get the knockout thanks to the Tachyon bits, potentially. I think, yes, Professor Seda was just played. Oh, I was like, what card is that? But it's <laughs> because it's a different artwork. Yep, that Professor Seda's vitality there. Yes, being able to accelerate the energy and draw three cards. Not a bad card there. So Brandon right now still has the attachment to work with. So still has Dire Flame Wings potentially. So we still, now we have part one of the plan is here. We have the knockout <laughs> this turn. Now we're going to think... Think of the future now. We're going to set up our next Roaring Moon. <laughs> <laughs> Think of the future here. Think of how to take out the future Pokemon. That is for sure. Roaring Moon EX being established here on the board from Brandon. Of course, we saw that ancient booster energy capsule being sought out of the deck here and placed onto this Roaring Moon EX. Yeah, there's just so much... So much energy acceleration from this deck. I think that's what makes Roaring Moon EX such a difficult deck to play against because of the fast pace that it has. And one of the reasons it has those fast pace, three energy moves, that's a <laughs> lot of energy, Wancho. But if you're able to get into it off of your Galarian Moltres feet, your Dark Patches, your energy switches, your Professor Sada's Vitality, you are cruising. And that's exactly what Brandon is doing now, taking a knockout here. And now we're back over to Scott's side. So Scott having taken one prize card, Brandon now down two prize cards. We're starting off this next turn. Uh, yes, and again, I think that I think you're right, Boo. That is the X factor in this matchup, the energy acceleration. Brandon can use stuff like the Dark Patch, like you mentioned earlier, Dire Flame Wing. Wow, Scott only has access to Stadium acceleration with the yeah. Magma Basin, and they need it sorely every single turn. It's not something easily searchable as well. No, especially and when your, your your deck doesn't really have a ton of search. Besides the professor's research that yeah. it relies on heavily, and also the Serena. <laughs> yeah, Serena the, was the supporter for turns, so they only drew five cards. Oh, no. Didn't draw an energy. Didn't well, draw the Basin. Do we have the Beaver room? We, the Bidoof was just played this turn. Oh, no. <laughs> Never mind then. We have absolutely yeah, nothing right now. That's what I call a lack of cards there, Wancho. That is unfortunate <laughs> indeed. We are going to see the escape rope here. Of course, that Mew EX, free retreat, being promoted into the active on Brandon's side. Tachyon Bits, Iron Valiant coming up into the active to get that ability off, get that damage down onto the field. And NTV now in the active uh, after that retreat thanks to the future booster capsule. Yes, and I like this play by Scott. You know what, right now, 
Don't really have anything. I, the only thing I could think of, maybe promote a single prize Pokemon, but the Bibarel, or the Bidoof, and the Radiant Charizard are really important. So you know wow. what? Have an Entei V. If you want to take this knockout, you're going to have to use Frenzied Gouging. And you know what? If you Frenzied Gouging, I'm taking some prizes too. <laughs> Yeah, frenzied gouging. We have yet to see it from Brandon, but that is always an option that you have with this deck. Probably not a move that you would really think to play uh, <laughs> against Valiente, but hey, it comes, it comes in clutch when you can slow your opponent down and you have such a big lead. So we'll see what Brandon decides to do here. We're going to see the boss's orders bring up this Iron Valiant here and this Roaring Moon EX coming into the active position. Yes, the catcher was tails, unfortunately. It would have been big to be able to do that, but you were just going to have to do it the old-fashioned way with the boss's orders and Pokestop. Oh, it's almost draw three cards there, but almost. getting the energy in the discard pile just as good. Yeah, fantastic. That is the second time that's happened there for Brandon, getting that energy into the discard pile, instantly accelerated out thanks to that Galarian Moltres, and then energy switch on top of that to switch it over to our main attacker in that Roaring Moon EX. Yeah, it's looking good here for Brandon. Yes, he did have to play that boss's order to get the the gust effect. Yep. That is, they, they do only play one because of, they do play multiple Pokemon catcher, and we do have one pro prize at the moment. Well, sheesh, boss's so orders came in clutch <laughs> there then. Only one copy, but found at the right time to be able to take this knockout yes. with Calamity Storm, that Pokestop going into the discard pile. And Brandon is down another two prize cards, that much closer to a 2-0 here, Wancho. Something Scott still has access to, though, is going to be that Radiant Charizard. That has to be the attacker this turn. And yeah. Brandon just has to miss a gust just to at least survive one more turn here. Maybe we could still pull out tricks. We do have things like the Metachamp potentially, but again, that was sometimes just the weakness of this Valiant deck is the inconsistency. You don't, you're, yeah. you don't have a, you have to fill your deck with a bunch of switch cards and you don't have a natural draw Pokemon besides Fleet Footed and uh, yeah, sometimes that is just the downside. Yeah, it could definitely feel awkward. That mm -hmm. is for sure. But yeah, it's just going to be the Combustion Blast there taking the knockout. Yeah, I mean, I was about to say one synergy that it does have is Radiant Charizard fits flawlessly into this deck. Brandon has already taken four prize cards. That Excited Heart ability is going to uh, bring Combustion Blast down to only one energy needed. That single fire energy that Scott already had on that Radiant Charizard. It's going to take the knockout with a huge hit of 250 damage. Another two prize cards down here for Scott, but still three left to take. Brandon, on the other hand, only has two left to take and a lot of energy out on the field. I'm trying to think of some uh, of a play Scott has potential here. Something he could do is maybe potentially take a knockout on this Roaring Moon. If you find a, find a way to knock out that Roaring Moon, that specific one, um, you could maybe force a draw for this match, for this round, a force it into Southern Death or something. Because if you take a knockout on this, the second Roaring Moon here has 40 damage. And if you're, this Entei over here has 230 HP, that means they have to use Frenzied Gouging. I think that could be the only potential route. And, but we'll have to see what they can do, what Scott can do. Ooh, but if but, they use Frenzied Gouging, they just win, right? Uh, they, they, they knock themselves out as well. Oh, yeah, they, that's why you have to knock out the, the Roaring Moon with no damage. Uh, well, but Scott still has three prize cards left to take, so that would be down two. Down to two, and then oh. when it goes back to Brandon, they both oh. essentially take their last prize. Oh my gosh, what? That is, so, <laughs> that is actually so tactical. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's the only way here, I think. It's just the because it's the, the, the prizing is a little bit awkward. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Wancho, I definitely didn't see that. <laughs> that's for sure. But Brandon still going through this turn here. Mew EX being utilized for that restart ability. Get some extra cards into the hand. Of course, drawing up to three. But, I mean, Brandon has definitely been using this Mew EX. It's, it's been just absolutely crushing <laughs> it with that restart ability in both of our games so far here. We're seeing the Professor's Research now. Brandon going through the deck. It's going to be a fresh seven cards even after that restart into drawing additional cards. Both of our Roaring Moon are fully powered up, but only one has a lack of damage here. Yes. 
Uh, Brandon here could be looking for something like the Palpat if it hasn't been discarded yet. That could be a way to really put back the boss's order so you don't have to depend on the Pokemon catchers. Uh, we have a potential way to draw here with the Pokestop. Pokestop. One. Unfortunately, one. tools aren't items anymore, so we're only taking that Dark Patch. Yeah, they are different categories, our tools and our items. So Dark Patch is going to go to the hand, but two, two tools to the discard. We're going to see that free retreat being utilized on that Mew EX to bring up this Roaring Moon into the active position. Calamity Storm going to discard that Pokey Stop. 220 damage, knocking out this Radiant Charizard at only 160 HP. Another prize card. Brandon only has one prize card left to take to take things home. Oh. And Scott still has three, Wancho. The tough thing here is you could also take a knockout on the active, but mm. then put 40 damage on the bench Roaring Moon. But right now, Scott only has Escape Rope to play. So no. as long as Brandon doesn't promote a Roaring Moon here, all oh, wait, right. no, no, no. 20 damage. Yeah, as long as... Yeah, it's math, it's math here <laughs> no, for you, Ancho. He's going to take two prizes anyway. So as long as they can put 40 damage on a second, the second Roaring Moon, the play should still be live here. Well, we're seeing a lot of Tachyon bits. That's 40 damage onto that benched Roaring Moon EX. And there it is. So many switching cards. <laughs> Just a retreat to that Ante. Ante has the knockout here. 200, doing 200 damage. And, oh, Brandon, if Brandon could find a tool as well, they could just win from here. So Brandon's out. Our Gust or the tool. Oh, my gosh. It's coming down to this. Scott won prize card. Brandon won prize card. Is Brandon able to take this last prize card and take a 2-0 victory? What are we working with? A Pokestop? All right. With the Pokestop. Did they get the catcher off the prizes? Ultra Ball discarding two. I don't know. The cards are so shiny, Wancho. I, I can barely <laughs> tell what they are. <laughs> I don't think there's a gust effect. They, they could potentially try and set up a new Wait, they Roaring didn't because the catcher... Oh, wait, wait, maybe they did because there's only one left. It was on the right uh, top-hand <laughs> side of the prize cards. No, they didn't. There's no way they did. Or did they use it already? We just didn't see it. I but. don't know. I don't know. Okay, Pokestop's being rolled here. We got a trekking shoe. Ooh, there oh. it is! <laughs> All three of these cards going to the hands for Brandon. Pokemon catcher heads is game potentially, or trekking drawing the shoes. tool. Oh, oh tracking shoes into the boss's orders. That's going to be game here for Brandon Bond. He takes it home with a 2-0 victory with Roaring Moon. Team Ancient, <laughs> you have won this one. Team Ancient wins indeed, but Valiant effort there put on by Aww, Scott. Cute. <laughs> and again, just have to give it, give it up to him. Great sportsmanship. Uh, this was an absolutely amazing match to watch. And there was that potential there. It was a very, very small line of potential play. And Scott was able to find it. Yeah. He even missed an attack again in this game. I know. If you noticed. I but. know. If, if that wasn't missed, I mean, I guess we could say what ifs all day. What if the prize cards were different <laughs> for Scott in that first game? Yes. What if that turn wasn't missed? But yeah. The this... future could be different, but you can't change the past, unfortunately. <laughs> that is, oh, that was good. Watch <laughs> that was good. I loved it. Yeah, we're walking through our game one here between these players. And uh, yeah, we were seeing knockouts here. Uh, not from Scott's side, unfortunately. It was from Brandon's side of the field, knockout after knockout. Even was able to take one back to attach an energy because there was a little bit of a, a misplay there on Brandon's side, but thanks to Scott um, allowing him to do that because of good sportsmanship. That was awesome to see. And Brandon was able to take things home. I mean, look at that board state there, Wancho. Just so many attackers there on your side ready to take things down and taking those last two prize cards here for Brandon. Um, and that was going to be a game in our first game here. Going into our second game, what are you looking at, Wancho? Yeah, again, it's just that roaring moon, the amount of energy Brandon has. It's just being able to have two great attacks and friends gouging. But right now, Calamity Storm. And since both players like having stadiums in play, it's pretty easy knockouts. And the knockout here again, 220 damage on the Valiant. Just the right math. Yeah, this I mean this time 
things were much closer between mm -hmm. our players. Scott was playing fantastically. It was much less awkward prize cards there. And as you said, did identify the line there to potentially take the, the game. But Brandon was able to take things home once again after knock after knock with these Calamity Storms. And then that last uh, boss's orders was incredible <laughs> there, Wancho. I wish I wish he flipped the Pokemon catcher first, though, True, yeah, just, just, just to, to keep us the hype. <laughs> But yeah, the trekking shoes into the boss's orders. Brandon Vaughn trekking his way into a win there with <laughs> Roaring Moon, and I'm sure happy to do it. Has day two the last three regional events that he went with with Roaring Moon, so potentially uh, leading to another day two. Wait, was that? He's Were looking for the fourth. Yeah. He's looking for the fourth. Or saying, what potentially. Are the, what's the record now? <laughs> or potentially a win. You know, I think that I think he's gonna be looking for that more yeah. than a potential day two. You know, but I think he's I think sitting. he's at six. I think that's six oh right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so he still sitting. has to, well, he needs one more point. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Sitting very comfortably <laughs> here in our day one. So that that was an awesome game to see, but I think the star of the show, once again, we've emphasized it was definitely the sportsmanship between both of our players there. Um, just awesome to see every time we, we get to see it. I love not having to go into our uh, our judge calls on stream on show. You seem to be a magnet for those. So. <laughs> I thought we were about to, to be honest. I got Watch worried like, there. No! <laughs> the heat war, the heat war in that last game. We're like, oh no, but yeah, that was awesome. And thank you again for choosing that match for the community choice. That was a blast to cast. Hopefully it was a blast for you mm -hmm. all to watch. And it was definitely a blast from the past there with that ancient deck <laughs> taking it down. I'm sorry, I'm done. Watch how you talk. I don't know what else to say. Combustion blast? I don't know. Uh, wait, but that's from the other side, though. Oh, my gosh. No, but yeah, it was very, very fun game. Great choice. Again, I was about to vote for that match as well, but you guys already did it for me. So who are you rooting for?